All right, so today we are going to make this soft looking animation. First things first, I'm going to place a camera. It's going to be right here. I will select the camera, go to 80 millimeters, because that's the focal length we need. Then I'm going to scale this down, bring in a cube, and this cube will be placed right over here. It's actually quite perfect already. Then I'm going to press Shift D and bring this over to the side, Shift and X, and make sure it's going down just a little bit. And now this is going to be our second cube. I'm going to duplicate this cube once again and I will bring it towards the side. Scale it down a bit. G and X, G and Z. Maybe scale it up so that it looks a bit like this. I'm going to take this cube once again, Shift D and hold Control, bring it exactly towards this side. G and Z, let's bring it down a bit and why not move it towards this area as well. And then I'm going to place the camera in its final position. 72 frames, I will RZ, I will RXX, I will RZ again. Make sure it's in the center of the camera, press I. Then I'm going right over here because we need some more. I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh and bring in a cylinder. The cylinder can be scaled down. Scale down and it should be scaled down even more because it should be able to fit on the cube. I'm going to give this a subdivision. Let's bring in three loop cuts right there. Let's press I on the top in order to scale this inwards. Shade, auto, smooth. Then I will duplicate this, shift D, S and scale it down so that it also fits right on here. Doesn't have to be that small, just a little bit smaller than the rest. And maybe scale it on the Z axis in order to give it some randomization. Then of course we also need a plane for the bottom. First we're going to do the animation, then we're going to change some of these cubes to look a little bit better, and we're going to do some texturing and lighting, and then it will be done. So let's select all of this, and this is its final form. So I'm going to select the cube, press I, then select this empty, press I, press I, press I on this empty again, and once again on this final empty as well. Then right here on frame zero, I'm going to press Alt R, RX 90, Something like this should work out fine. I'm going to bring it down. It fits on this table perfectly. If that's not the case, you should probably scale it down. Now, I'm going to select the deepest point of the headphone model, so somewhere over there, and place it on the plane. Pivot point to 3D cursor, RX, and let's bring it down until it is sitting on this cylinder. R and X, and make sure it looks good now. Very cool. Now, perhaps we were a bit too hasty with this because what I want to do is select this empty right here, R and Z, let's bring it inside, R and X, let's also rotate it like this as if it's been folded in. Then I'm going to select this empty and R and X, we're going to have to play around with this so, so it seems, R and Y, R and X, R and Z, just make sure everything makes sense and that it's laying down here like this, something like this. Then I will go past each empty once again. So this one, that one, the cube of course, and the other side as well. And now we have an animation on the first frame. So if we play this, already looks pretty cool. We can make some changes to it though. I'm going to select everything. I'm going to select this empty, that empty, this empty, that empty, and of course the cube. Then I will go into the graph editor. I'm going to set this to normalize so I can see every single line. This will make sure that the line is set from zero to one instead of having its absolute values. So we can see every single line on one bar. It's not going to be representative for the scale. Doesn't really matter though, because we can work with it. Here I'm going to set it to individual centers. I will select everything S and X, and this will give us an extreme Bezier animation. So it's going to be slow in the beginning, then it will be fast in the middle, and then it will be slow near the end. So I'll show you what that means. Shift A, let's play this. There you go. So it's moving slow, then it's opening up, and it's slowing down near the end again. I like this original setup, but I'm going to make some tweaks in order to make it even better. So let's start with the cube. I will go to the Z location. Let's open that up and I will make sure that the Z location is starting faster. So it's going to move up. Very good, because I want it to move fast in the beginning. Then I'm going to change the rotation for this as well. So I'll we'll select all of these rotation animations. Make sure that we get the ones on the right because those are actually part of the left. It's kind of weird, but we scaled it, so now it's passing through the other ones. So it doesn't really matter. So we're going to take this and I will S, I'm going to set this to bounding box center, S and Y, and this will make sure that it's faster in the beginning, like so. Maybe even more extreme, S and Y. You can see what this does with our curve, by the way. There you go, looks pretty cool. I think it's a bit too much. Something like this. There you go. So it's moving fast. We've got a rotation, but it's slowing down near the end. And I like the way it looks. And uh, then I'm going to select this one. I think it can be moved a bit faster. I'm going to start with the left one. Uh, the C Euler rotation is the one that we are needing. I want that one to move a bit faster. So I'm going to bring it up. 
whoop, now it's smoothly moving into place. We have no intersections visible as well. That's looking good. I'm going back into the timeline by the way. I will select this because those two keyframes now are the same and I want to add some randomization to it. So we'll take this, go to the middle part right here and perhaps we can rotate it on the RYY for example. In order to give it a slight variation, press I. Then I will take this one and perhaps we can just simply do the same. So R and Y to make sure it looks a bit more special than it does right now. So we are right in the middle because we end at frame 72, 36 is the middle. And right now we have an animation. Yeah, it's doing its thing, but it can look better. So let's go to the graph editor. Let's go to the Yula rotation. And we can play around with this to get any type of result that we like. But the safer option would be to simply scale this on the X axis. That looks pretty smooth. Then I will select this one. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I think this one is a bit aggressive, so I'm going to slow that down. Uh, it's probably on the Z Euler rotation. I want that to be slower. So I'm simply going to select this area and bring it upwards, this area and bring it downwards. And now it will be a way more gradual animation, like so. And I believe in order to fix it even better, we can take the X axis and we're going to take this and bring it down. So that one is a bit faster. So something like so. We really have to play around with this so it's not intersecting with each other. Yeah, that's looking fine. So, something like this should do the trick. Whoop, and now it's clicking into place. Whoop. All right, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to roll with it. So, that is our animation. Let's go back to the timeline. This is what it looks like. Pretty cool. You can achieve similar results simply by following the steps that I just laid out for you. First things first, I'm going to make some adjustments to these models. So I'm going into this cube and I will give it a material like so. And this is going to be the first material. Then I'm heading over into edit mode. I will select all of these lines simply by pressing on three and then selecting this face. Then I will click on two. So now we are only selecting the lines and control B, I will bevel this. And I will give it quite some segments as well, like so. Then I will add the plus icon new assign. So this one has a different color now than the first one. So I'm going to do the first one first. I will go into render mode, go to the shader editor, and we need some lighting to work with in order to see what we're doing. So I'm going to bring in an HDRI. I'm going to use Quattro Quanti. I think that one is nice and white and looks very clean. So I'm going into this cube and every color should be pastel. So I'm going to make this some type of pink. I'm going to add some more detail to this one. So I will add a noise texture. Control T, object in the vector. Let's add a bump factor in the height, normal in the normal. And then I will play around with this. And it seems like this area hasn't gotten the right material. So I'll select it and assign it. I'm going to increase the scale of this just by a little, decrease the strength by a lot. And now we get some extra detail for free. And it looks kind of, I don't know, it looks kind of candy-ish, kind of soft-ish. I like it. Then for the second material, let's auto shade this smooth. And I'm simply going to make this some gold type yellow. So increase the metallic all the way. Let's play around with the roughness until we see something we kind of like. I think this looks pretty cool. So I'm going to give this one, this next cube, an orange color. So click on new and this will be a bit more orangey like so. I think it's already done, but we can add a bevel modifier. Bevel, let's increase the segments. Control A, apply the scale. Let's decrease the amount. Looks pretty cool, looks very nice. Now, for the other two, what we can do is select this. Let's click on new, let's click on dash to isolate it. Let's add some loop cuts, control R, control R until we have these cubes. I'm going to click on seven, select all of the middle cubes and don't select the outer ones. I'm going to loop tools, circle, and now we have a circle. I'm going to press E and I will bring this inwards. Then I will select this entire circle right here and press control B. First, let's apply the scale, control B, and this will be a material. So plus, assign, control I to select everything else, such as this one as well. So let's select all of this. Material, new, assign. So this one can be a gold color, shade is smooth. Let's make it gold again. Let's bring it over there. I see we have selected a bit too much. So this one can be the other material as well like this, and then for this material, we can choose a bit of a bluish type, like so. Let's click on dash, and now it looks like this. 
pretty cool, pretty easy. And let's do the same for this one. I'm going to add some loop cuts. Once again, right here, I will select the middle area, loop tools, circle. Now we have a circle, then I'm going to press E. Let's bring this inside. And then I will add a bevel modifier, a bevel modifier. Let's increase the segments. Let's decrease how much of it this is, but it's a bit too harsh. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier and now it looks like this. This is going to be one color. So I'm simply going to add a color and it might be yellowish. And the final color will be for the plane. And that's going to be a pinkish tone that looks very similar to the original cube that we made first. And now we have to give some metallic colors to the cylinders. So this one first, let's make it bluish. To increase the metallic and the roughness can go up just a little bit make it shiny but not too much let's select this one and it could be goldish so like so goldish let's add it and now it looks like this very nice so what i'm going to do is i will select this one and this is the empty that has the entire headphones in it then i will click select hierarchy and this will select everything underneath the hierarchy of the empty i will press m headphones place it into its own collection these are the headphones and now I'll go into the camera, go to go to viewport display, passepartout, let's increase it all the way. And now I can see what it actually looks like. Very cool, but we also need some lighting on here. So I'm going to bring in some lights. First of all, let's bring an area light right there. I'm going into Lumio and I will place it somewhere on the back, somewhere on the side. Maybe we can rotate it around to the top and increase the strength of this. Now it looks like this. Very cool, I'm going to duplicate it, go into Lumio, press on two. I'm also going to bring this one in the back and give it some extra light, something like this, but it could be a lot harsher. So perhaps we can decrease the spread, increase the power a bit. It's a bit too much. I like it like this. Go into Lumio once again, let's place it right there, let's see what it does. I do like the logo being lit, very nice. Then I will select all of these area lights, place them into its own collection, headphone lights, and then I will go to Light linking right here, select the headphone lights collection. The target is the headphones itself at light linking. And now all the lights work on the headphones, but no longer on the outside planes. So we've got that done right now. I'm going to bring in some lighting for this as well. So let's place a light right there somewhere over here. Let's rotate it on the X axis. Let's make it pretty strong. I want to make sure that we have some shadows somewhere, something like this, perhaps. Very cool. And of course the finishing touch would be to set it to cycles and then it will actually start to look good. Compute. Let's see what it looks like. Pretty cool, pretty awesome. And let's go over here to the timeline and do the final camera animation as well. So let's go over here. This is the final position, 72. I'm going to select the camera, press I. And we'll go to frame one and I will zoom this in all the way over here and maybe even down on the Z axis. I'm going to press I, go into the graph editor and then I will select all of this. Let's see, where are we? We are moving on the location only, no rotations, no scale. So I'm going to lock that off and I will select all of this, press A and dot. So let's take both of these, S and Y, and let's bring it upwards like so. And that's it for this animation. It's actually quite simple. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about Lumio, there's a link in the description. Also, I would appreciate it if you click on subscribe. And if you want to watch the next video, then I recommend clicking right here.